Hi everyone, I'm B-Man and this is the Immersive Base Building Guide Part 3. Since it is a beginner's guide, I was limiting myself to low-level items from the base game only until now. But in this episode, I'm going to show you how the base will look without that restriction. So, I'm going to use high-level items, DLCs and mods to give our little outpost its final look. One thing about mods, as long as you play solo, you can do whatever you want. But if you chose to play online, you have to use the mods that the server is running. So you might want to do some research first before you choose a server to play on. Downloading and installing mods is fast and simple process. In your Steam library, locate Conan Exiles, then scroll down to the workshop section and click browse the workshop. Now you can either browse all available mods, or, if you're looking for a specific one, enter its name in the search field. Click the thumbnail to go to the mods page, then hit the subscribe button and Steam will download and install it. To activate a mod, in the main menu click mods. The mods you downloaded will be in the available mods list. Use the arrow buttons to move them to the selected mods to activate them in game. Then click back and yes to restart the game. Time to start building. First thing I'm gonna do is upgrade the defenses. Tier 3 building pieces have this tile called crenellated wall and you can snap a siege cauldron to it. Honestly, crenellated walls should look completely different than this, but I'll spare you the long run. Anyway, I'm using the crenellated wall and hatch to create a murder hole above the door. They were actually a real thing in medieval fortifications. They were located above places that enemies had to pass, for example inside the gatehouses, so that the defenders could throw down all sorts of nasty stuff at them. I'm going to do something similar for the second gate. Previously I've arranged the walls to create a funnel leading to the door. Now, with the crenellated walls and siege cauldron, I'm going to turn it into a proper kill zone. This is one of the basic principles of building fortifications. Creating places where enemy is severely restricted and open to attacks from multiple directions. Of course, here it is in micro scale. A real castle would have a barbican, proper crenellated battlements and machicolations or wooden hoarding on the outside and around the trap court beyond the gatehouse. At higher levels a lot of new items become available, among them a fish trap. They are quite simple to use, put them in the water and that's it. This presents a nice opportunity to fill this empty space behind the animal pen. First I'm going to make channels under the wall so it looks a little bit less ridiculous. Realistically, they should be a lot smaller and arched in order to support the weight of the wall above, but there are no arches of any kind in the game. To make a base look like a real living place, it's a great idea to actually put people around looking like they are doing mundane everyday tasks. So I'm going to add a fisherman who will look after the traps. As I mentioned before, inequality is the main principle of creating believable community, so I'll make a place for him according to this rule. Since he's a nobody, a tent and a campfire with some clutter around should be enough. All of this is purely cosmetic, but that's what creates a realistic location. Instead of placing a regular thrall here, I'm going to use Pippi's test gun NPC. There's a lot you can do with those guys. For starters, their looks can be edited, you can equip them and make them play any emote available in game. Unlike Thralls, they are neutral to other players, so if you want to build, for example, a tavern, they won't attack customers. Also, you can create dialogue for them, turn them into vendors, etc. Basically, you can make a regular interactable NPCs. I'm just going to use them around the base for decoration. Every cool base should have a secret address, so let's make one. I don't want to draw attention to it, so I won't build any additional fortifications around it. Instead, I'm going to use vegetation to conceal it. All the placeable trees and bushes come from various mods. Check the description for the full mod list. So, the door is kinda obscured now, but this lonely group of trees and bushes is screaming secret entrance here. There's a simple fix for that. Place a lot more of them. Easy method for placing vegetation is to start with the big trees in the center, then use smaller ones as you approach the border of the area you want to cover. I want it to look as if the whole peninsula was covered with palm trees before the base was built, 
so I'll place the biggest trees near the wall and then medium ones and finally the smallest ones at the edge to make it look like the forest was spreading outwards naturally. The small plants, bushes, tall grass etc. can be used to add some density and variety to the groove and blend the trees with the land. The most important thing is to keep the density of vegetation consistent so that the part which hides the secret entrance won't stand out from the rest. There is still some room left behind the animal pen and it will be a perfect place for a herb garden. For gameplay purposes you need only the compost box and the planters, but since I'm using ember light mode which changes the farming system a bit, I'm gonna add a horticulturalist bench here and some appropriate clutter. This will allow me to use the mods features and the bench has a thrall slot so that's another person working mundane task, which makes the base look alive. This is all about creating an illusion that the base is inhabited by regular people going about their daily tasks and not just a collection of crafting stations and a bed for the player to use. Sometimes combining elements from different building sets gives the best result. There is a nice sheltered bay right next to the base which will make a suitable location for a port. To build it I'm going to use mostly sandstone elements but I'll add insulated wood tiles where it makes more sense. The stair trick, which I explained in part 2, allows me to place the pillars on the sides but it is extremely important to go underwater and make sure they are connected to the ground and place additional pillars below as needed. Also, they do not provide support for the ceiling tiles, so you will need to snap a temporary pillar to the last ceiling, since 4 is the maximum number of tiles you can build away from foundation, and you won't be able to snap stairs to the last one without it. After the side columns are placed and connected to the ground, the temporary pillar can be safely removed. It doesn't matter how much clutter you can fit into any given space, as long as it's static, it's just a background. So always look for opportunities to add people, animate them and fit the decorations around them to create the real life scenes playing in various spots around the base. Crafting stations are always a good starting point, since they have a spot for a thrall and proper animation. So here I am going to place two guys building a boat, using carpenter's bench, a thespian and some clutter. Also, that's the reason I've left some space between the dock and the wall. The beach is a gentle natural ramp to drag the boats in and out of the water. When building any structure I always look up real life examples and try to identify its key features, then replicate them in game. One such feature that's quite prominent on otherwise empty docks and piers are bollards. These are the same poles I use to prop up the boat and I don't want them to stick out beneath the pier so I'm placing them over the columns to hide the lower part. And with that done, there's just one more thing to add, a boat. Having a port also means trade, so I'm going to build a small storage yard for goods and place for Dockmaster to sit and watch over the port. I really like these fabric covered stands because they break the monotony of the solid wall and along with the clutter hide the simple shape behind them. Also they add much needed color variation to the place. The Dockmaster is another Thespian and according to the inequality principle I'm going to outfit him with better clothing since he's an important member of the community. His job would include monitoring the traffic and recording the transactions, so writing utensils and scrolls are appropriate clutter for his desk. And since he spends his days out in the heat, having something to drink nearby also makes sense. And since he's higher up the social ladder of our base, he should be using metal tableware. Thespians are completely randomized when you place them, so sometimes you might end up with strange colors for skin or hair. To further enhance the realism of your base, you might want to edit the NPCs to have a consistent look. Also, consider the location. You won't stay pale in the desert for long, but getting tan in the snowy forest also might be a problem. If you have a theme for your base, you might need a very specific appearance for your NPCs. A red-headed Nordheimer would look really out of place in the Darfari camp, for example. There are special cases where you actually want the NPCs to look out of place. For example, a trader from distant lands should not blend into the crowd. Another thing to note is the apparent age of the NPC. 
The dog master here has a slightly grey hair, which makes him look like an older, experienced person, which is appropriate for his position. To make the shrine look a bit more secluded, I've arranged the trees outside the wall to create a soft barrier encircling it. They also add interesting organic shapes and color variation to the place. I'm going to place a couple of sculptures around the shrine. They are consistent with the theme and draw attention away from the repetitive shape of the building. A banner on the tower serves similar purpose and breaks the overpowering monotony of sandstone wall. I'm going to enhance the looks of the important places inside the base by adding awnings to the doors, then put some appropriate clutter around and finally add trees and other plants. Player build structures, due to limited number of building tiles, tend to look dull and repetitive. Everywhere you look there are flat surfaces, straight lines and mostly right angles. Nature is the complete opposite. It is made of curves and complex shapes. So having some plants around really changes the look of the base and ties it to the landscape. Also, it makes sense. In the desert trees provide shade, while in the colder regions a windbreak. There is one area that should always be kept clear though. You don't want anything in the immediate vicinity of the gate on the outside, since it provides cover for the attacking enemies. I've placed the vegetation in the same manner as before. First the trees, then bushes and grass to seamlessly integrate them with the ground. A word of warning. The plants will clip through the walls, so be alert when placing them near the buildings. Stray Thralls mod adds tokens to the game, which, when placed in the inventory of a fighter or archer thrall, make them play some animations. So, our guards can actually talk with each other instead of just standing and staring. Let's move inside the tower now. At higher levels, a lot of new useful objects get unlocked, so I'll place them around the kitchen. Then add some more appropriate clutter, a small pile of firewood and some utensils. On each level of the tower above the kitchen, I've placed a gate and fences around the stairs, then added support beams on every other wall below the ceiling. I've kept the same room layout, but completely redecorated them according to the inequality principle, and since the plier rules over this place, that means high quality furniture, decorations and metal dinnerware, to make it look like a comfortable living space. I've also added study area and armor stands to the armory, and finished the tower by making a place to relax and enjoy a drink and some music on the top. The musician is actually an entertainer. The tokens I've previously used on the guards don't affect entertainers, so I've used Conan's Sexiles mod to make her play the tinkering emote and then place the harp in correct position. The armor stands come from Fashionist mod, which lets you use alternate visuals for your character's armor. You can do it manually or place the armor on the rack and then choose the transfer style option from the radial menu. If you enjoyed this tutorial so far, hit the subscribe button so you won't miss the last episode. Thank you for watching.